Hey friends, welcome to this episode of the Coaching Conversations with Denny Graham Workshop. I'm Vanessa Fernandez, and today we're talking about behavior modification, transformation, um, however you like to say it. And the reason why I want to talk about this, and I talk about it a lot, is because this is this is what most people are looking for when when we come to any sort of tool that helps us with personal growth. Typically, there is some sort of behavior that is causing us pain and we want to understand why it's happening and see if we can't figure a way to move on from that situation. And what I'd like to talk about right now is kind of give you a structure when we're thinking through the three centers of intelligence. So as I'm sure you know, in the Enneagram, there are three centers of intelligence. There are three types that reside in each one. And those are, your mind, your heart, and your gut, your thinking, your feeling, and your doing. And those actually correlate to sort of, they stack on top of each other when we're looking at our behavior. Behavior lies at the surface. It is the top layer, if you will, of this stack. It's the most obvious. It's what we see. It's what we um, experience from other people. We see what we do. We, it's right up there. It's hard to hide. But underneath that, The second layer is our emotions. Our emotions fuel our actions. We do what we feel like doing. We do uh, what kind of just bubbles up from our inner desires. And that's all, that's great. But then the most bottom layer is kind of where we're gonna spend a lot of time because any type of behavior modification is gonna be short-lived unless we make transformation that hits all the way down through all three layers and especially the bottom layer because that's the one that really is that first domino that knocks down all the rest and that is our mind. And when we look at the mind triad, um, fear. (laughs) Fear Fear resides in the mind. Fear is a construct that we experience, that we build from our imagination and our thoughts. And so that, that, that fear, the thinking that we have going on is what causes us to have emotions. We only feel based on what we think. So fear is the bedrock which creates emotions and from emotions, we do all the things that we do. It flows from our desires, from our feelings. So when we are sort of trying to figure out, well, how do I change this action that I keep doing? How do I get free of habitual behavior that I don't enjoy or isn't serving me any any longer? We really have to go through and do some self-observation around all three of these layers. And that's what I'm gonna walk you through today. Um, what I would love for you to do is journal and ask yourself at least for a week, around the topic or the area that you want to see transformation in. So we're kind of focusing on, maybe it's your eating, maybe it's your spending, maybe it's your relationships. We're going to focus on that one area and we're going to ask ourselves these three questions. What am I doing? Or what do I want to do? (laughs) What is the action that is happening or that I wish I could do or that is, is kind of that surface level behavior? What's the behavior? And when we are answering this question, we're gonna try and be as specific as possible. We're gonna give as many details as possible. And this is really a great place. All three questions are gonna give you an opportunity for this, but this is a really great place to practice uh, self-observation that is non-judgmental. It's so important that we self-observe and set our judgment aside. Because the minute that judgment comes into the picture, the minute that we start telling ourselves, oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, you shouldn't think that. Oh, you shouldn't feel that. The minute we put those judgments, then our kind of mind and heart and body shut down because that doesn't feel good to be judged and begins to give answers that are right, which only blinds us from what is true. So judgment puts a big cloth or veil over the truth. And until we can expose the truth and see the truth of what's actually happening in our heart, mind, and soul, we can't make any progress. So we have got to set judgment aside. There is no right feeling or wrong feeling. There is no good or bad in this scenario. It simply is because we are observing what already exists. 
So we've got to set judgment aside. Once we do that, we're going to name in detail everything that we want to do because we can only fight a demon that has a form. If there's no form to the demon, if there's no details, if there's no skin and bones on it, we can't attack it. We can't do anything with it. So we're going to be as detailed as possible when we, when we go through and journal, what am I doing? Um, and it may be ugly and it may get ugly. And this is a really important point. Actually, most people get stuck in their transformative work because this type of uh, unpacking of ourselves requires us to take steps backwards and go deeper into pain. And most people do not want that. They feel like the solution should be we take steps forward and we get out of pain. The problem is that never really works. <laughs> Almost like if you were tied to like a bungee cord and the bungee cord is hooked all the way in the back, in the deepest level, back all the way down in our mind, in our fear. When we're looking at that stack, behaviors on top, feelings in the middle, fear all the way at the bottom, and a bungee cord is hooked down at the fear. If we try to move forward, we're just gonna keep, keep pulled back, keep getting pulled back. We actually have to go deeper into pain, take some steps backwards, unhook that hook, and then we can move out of it. So we have to go through the pain. We have to process it. We have to go deeper in. And most people are not willing to do that. It feels uncomfortable. It feels counterintuitive. It's the only way to get free. So we're going to name our behavior. We're going to name our demon. We're going to put clothes on him, get them all like very clear in our minds. And as you're doing this, um, I'm just going to go through each type. Each type has sort of a behavior flavor, if you will, of what they're trying to do to find their place in the world. And so I'm just going to go through this and hopefully this can be a starting point. This is a very vague, high level starting point and we want to get detailed. So you got to do some work after I give you this, you got to do your own work, but just to give you a starting point for your type. So ones want to fix. A lot of their doing is going to be around fixing. Twos want to give. Threes want to perform. Fours want to create, fives want to ponder, sixes want to plan, sevens want to consume, eights want to exert, and nines want to delay. So as you're thinking about what is it that I'm doing, what is it that I want to do, what does this behavior actually look like, that's a starting point for you. It's probably going to revolve around your types, sort of classic trademark doing, if you will. Now that we've named our behavior, let's move to that second layer, which is feeling. We're going to ask ourselves, what am I feeling about this? So first, what, what, do I, what am I doing? Now, what am I feeling? Feelings are funny things. <laughs> they lie beneath the surface because what we do is pretty plain, but um, only when we allow our souls to be still can we see the feelings that lie beneath. If you imagine your soul like a pool of water, if that pool of water is shaken and moving and striving and hustling and going and, and, and anxious, it's going to be shaken. It's going to be stirred up and there's no way you're going to see what lies at the bottom. The only way we can find and uncover our feelings is to get still and to provide space for them and honor them so that the pool can settle and the water can get clear and we can see what's beneath. And the reason why feelings are so tricky to get a handle on is because oftentimes we don't want to. Feelings are the least controllable of the three. We can control our actions and our thoughts much easier than we can control our feelings. Feelings bubble up, they course through our veins, they leak out of our eyes, they make our voice quiver, and we don't feel in control when we are experiencing strong feelings. So we've kind of become experts at just shutting them down or moving on or distracting or going, detaching. We have to surrender at some point and get still and be okay with the feelings getting a little crazy, with the feelings having a little space to be. Because when we do that, we can actually identify them. And like I said, we cannot get to work until we've identified what's going on. So we're gonna journal around what, I'm, what am I doing? We're gonna journal around what am I feeling, which is gonna require some time and space and some quiet and stillness. And once we have completed those two steps, now we're able to really go into that last and final step where we're hooked 
And that is, what am I afraid of? That's the third question I want you to journal. What am I afraid of? See, fear lies at the deepest level. Any action or behavior that has us trapped has a direct connection to fear, some sort of fear. And I'm gonna quickly go over the basic fear of each type. This is where you're gonna start. And again, we need to detail out that fear. We need to do the work of saying, well, what's my specific fear? But it's gonna have this flavor of your type. So type one's fear is I am not good enough. Type two's fear is I am not loved enough. Type three's fear is I have no worth. Type four fear, I have no significance. Type five's, I am not competent. Type six, I am not supported. Type seven, I will not be satisfied. Type eight, I will be betrayed. And type nine, I do not matter as much as others. And that's where we're gonna start. And then from there, we just keep digging. We keep digging. What is that fear that is fueling my emotions that is producing my actions? We have to go all the way back down. And the beautiful thing is the Enneagram does tell us what we need to remember. Because the truth is that fear is simply an imagination and not founded. It's not founded. For type ones, you need to remember that you are good and loved, not in spite of your defects, but because of them. For type twos, you need to remember you are loved for who you are, not for what you do. For type threes, you need to remember you have intrinsic worth. You do not need to earn it. For type fours, you need to remember there is nothing missing. You are whole and you can find happiness. For type fives, you need to remember that there is an abundant knowing that lies beyond you and that holds you. For type sixes, you need to remember you are strong enough for whatever may come your way. For type sevens, you need to remember that there is more than enough to satisfy you right here, right now. For type eights, you need to remember that your vulnerability is your strength and goodness lies all around you. For type nines, you need to remember your voice matters and you are just as valuable as anyone else. And when we go all the way down and we identify our fear and we speak truth to that fear, that's like we're unhooking that bungee cord. We are unhooking ourselves from a flawed way of thinking that is fueling emotion and that is creating behavior that we can't seem to get away from. This is why transformation really takes a lot of courage and it takes going beneath the surface, finding the layers beneath, which is gonna take courage, which is gonna take time. It may even take uh, an Enneagram coach or a therapist or a counselor or a spiritual director or just a good friend for you to be vulnerable with and who can ask some clarifying questions and who can cheer you on as you do the work. But this is the work and it's good work. And it's the only way to truly get away from the behavior that we feel stuck in.